Hi everybody, in this video we'll look at how we can create a modular city with the help of geometry nodes. It's a really fun example where we build up some simple shapes and with those simple shapes we populate them based on a grid and on that grid we put some modules that are rotated based on specific logic. So the first thing we'll do is create a grid. We want to use 6 meter modules by 3 so we get our grid there but that's the total size so we need to output a value and that's going to be our grid size and then let's have an integer that tells us the vertex numbers now we can multiply the two together with a math node we can change this to multiply and then that will be our total size for x and y doesn't matter we can be a complete square at the moment right now we should have a five meter grid but you can see it's not quite five squares so if we count one two three four five and a little bit so what we need to do is add another vertex so add and then one and now this grid should be the perfect size so if we go to good size you see everything aligns well now let's plug this into the Y and now we have our grid set up and it's set up in such a way that we have a cell size. So that's really important and then we can just change the number of grids to make this larger. Now I'm working with a 6 meter module so I want to keep that as a 6 meters element. So with the grid next we want to instance that grid on a number of lines so we create a 3D grid. So to do that let's add a line and that line should have an offset of 3.8 in the Z direction because again that's the size of the model that I'm working on. Next let's put an instance on points. So this will be the points and this will be our grid. So now we have a 3D grid if we change the number here it changes the height. What we can do is create the grid and make it points. So mesh to points and vertices is fine. So with our grid now ready and in good shape, we want to filter only what's inside of our building. To do that, we'll use the Raycast node. So Shift A, search for Raycast. And we'll use our geometry input into here. And now let's use a separate geometry node which separates the geometry based on a specific selection. And here we'll say whether it is hit or not. We have to realize instances in order for this to work correctly because we have our points, but each floor of points is considered separate. Now you see what is happening. We're getting the inverse effect. So it's all the points that are on top of the mesh. So what we need to do is change the ray direction. So if we adjust it to one, now it's shooting from the bottom and going up. And in each situation, it goes up, it goes up until it has a hit. If it doesn't have a hit, it doesn't need to go in that direction. And it works now as much as we want it to work. And you can see our grid is not that big, so then we lose some of them. So all we need to do is increase our grid. We could make this even smarter by having a boundary box around all of our objects. But I thought just having an arbitrary large grid should give us a pretty good starting point for the most part. So now that we have all the points, we can put an instance on every single point. So Shift A, search, instance on points, again. And we want to get an object input. I'm going to drag this module in here. Let's put this as an instance. And now we have our grid. To make it rotate the way it was rotated before, we want to use hit normal. So if you plug that in, you see we have a very interesting layout. It can work for different things. So now we have to align Euler to vector. Make sure pivot is set to Z. And Y can play but this shouldn't go in rotation it should actually go in vector so once it goes to vector it should align in such a way that everything that's facing out is correct and you can see in this face all the faces that are facing out are the same ones in here more or less as well in here we have some but some also that are not aligned and that's okay we we're not going to get a perfect match in all situations and instead of rotating them arbitrarily we can snap it to 90 degrees or 360 degrees or any other degree angle. So to do that, Shift A, Vector, Vector Math. We can plug this in here and change this from Add to Snap. And now it snaps in all directions. And we want to change the increment and we're only interested about the Z. So let's add a value, which is going to be pi over 2 so that's 1.571 and next combine xyz let's plug 
this into the Z and this vector into this vector here. And now you can see that all of these, even though they're rotating, they're snapping to the closest angle, whatever that angle might be. If we're not satisfied with the angle, we can change it by adjusting our vector. So shift D to duplicate this, change from snap to add, and we'll duplicate this area here as well, the combine X, Y, Z in the value, and plug this into vector. And now we can try different elements. So this is pi over two. We can try pi and all of them rotate again, or pi uh, plus pi over two and we get this kind of rotation. So if we have a more straightforward volume, I believe all of them should rotate more in their correct orientation. Let's do another one. So Shift D to duplicate this edge, E to extrude the edge, and E again to extrude that. And you can see our grid is ending, so we can put something like 16 there. And let's add more floors. Right now we are at 19 floors. So all of these should be facing the correct way, but we might not be happy with the way that they're facing. So I'm going to leave this value at pi and let's add a multiply math node. Here I'll put pi over two, change this to multiply, add an integer, plug this into the integer and we'll plug this into Z so we can get rid of this. And now let's see what's happening. This is add, it should be multiply. Now the rotation, I'm not happy with the rotation because it doesn't seem to be doing much in this case. And that might be because in the previous example, the way I did the raycast was slightly different. So let's try the same thing here. Let's add a transfer attribute. And for the source, change from flow to vector. Plug this in, type normal. So we want to get the normal direction from our input geometry, from the base geometry. And if we plug this in into ray direction, and we need to change this to nearest, Let's see now. Yes, so the normals are slightly different and they give us better rotation of our faces. So if I change this to zero, you can see now more of the faces are facing the correct way. They're not always facing the correct way. For example, here they're not. And yes, so now we have our working setup here. So it's pretty straightforward. And again, it's very useful for being able to populate a whole city. And it's fun as well. It's really nice to see the feedback of changing the mass and instantaneously understanding what that means in regards to the build form. So we can shape whole cities, whole neighborhoods based on specific footprints. And then we can do specific elements like, for example, on this street here, which we can say it's a major street, we can have a slightly building up of height. So the buildings that are the closest to the center, the tallest, and then everything animates from there. Thanks so much for watching this. Consider subscribing to my channel if you like more content like that. I also have a Patreon where you can get behind the scenes footage and files similar to the one that you see here. See you next time.